All right, so talking about the concept of sigmoidoscopy, when you're talking about sigmoidoscopy, you just, um, you don't reflect back to your anatomy. I get to see that there's a part of the large intestine known as a sigmoid. All right, so if we said what sigmoidoscopy, sigmoidoscopy is just like an instrument that was what specially designed to observe around the sigmoid. All right, so you want to see if there's any inflammation around the sigmoid, you want to see if there's ulcer, you want to see if there's inflammation, you want to see if there's cancer, all right? So now, if you actually what this one is the long one, which is known as what, colonoscopy, right? And this one is what, for observing the whole of the colon, either the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid, the rectum, or the anus, right? So just know the difference between the two concepts, right? So we're talking about the flexible sigmoidoscopy, all right? We talk about the steps in how you can be able to use this on the patient. We talk about the purpose, the indication, the contraindication, and the risks of using what this um, instrument, all right? So this is a flexible sigmoid, sigmoidoscopy, all right? Used for observing or examining okay the sigmoid colon all right so here we have it that a flexible sigmoidoscopy is a medical procedure used to visually what examine the lower part of the colon all right and the lower part of the colon is a sigmoid as a sigmoid colon right and you can also use it to observe the rectum because we have the rectum here before the colon all right that are before the sigmoid colon all right um preparation what are the steps that you can be able to use in what um that can help you use this uh, instrument, all right? So first of all, you prepare the patient by bowel cleaning, and you ask the patient to fast for at least, what, four to six hours before you start any, what, um, process using the sigmoid, um, sigmoidoscopy, all right? Then next, you insert. So can you see how the patient is lying down, all right? It's lying down on the lateral side, okay? While you insert, and you are now observing it on a screen like this, okay? So now, you now lubricate. First of all, you have to lubricate the tube. That's a sigmoidoscope. So you lubricate it. Then you now what, insert the lubricated or flexible tube inside the anus. You guide it through the sigmoid colon and the rectum, right? Visualization. The doctor will now examine the interior lining using a camera and light, okay? So the camera is usually at the tip of this. So as you are putting it, you are observing it on this TV right here. Okay. So biopsies and polyps removal can be done. All right. Removal of the sigmoidoscopy can slowly be withdrawn from the anus after you are done. All right. What is the purpose? Why are you doing a sig a a a a, a, a a, a sigmoidoscopy, right? You want to screen, you want to check if there's what any colorectal cancer, right? You want to investigate for other things like rectal bleeding, abdominal pain, diarrhea, or constipation. They also want to monitor for inflammatory bowel disease. Then, I told you guys that it also has a, a therapeutic use where you can be able to use it to remove things like what polyps or even take some biopsies out there, okay? Indications for people who you can use it right so for people who are what, 50 years plus right who have an average risk for colorectal cancer if they complain about bleeding so they must just have to do this asap okay then um people who have family history of colorectal cancer you can also do this people who have a personal history of polyps or inflammatory bowel disease you can also use this right then people who have some abnormal stool tests you can also still use this okay what are the contraindications group of people where you shouldn't do this on people who have severe colon obstruction you shouldn't force it in people who have an active bleeding or perforation active bleeding means the bleeding is still on of course when you put when you put your scope the blood will stay in the camera and you won't be able to see anything okay then people who have had a recent colon surgery you shouldn't use this people who have inflammatory bowel disease that is very severe you shouldn't use this right risks and complication of course you are penetrating someone so there's risks of bleeding perforation infections if the instrument is not sterile 
right? Then some adverse reaction to sedation because you basically what puts the patient to sleep, right? So the patient might actually react to all that, right? So that's it for flexible sigmoidoscopy.